the alienated growing old today by Gladys elder or ap introduction by jb priestley and photographs by mike abrahams and i think really the fact that it's mike abrahams who i think is a fantastic photographer who doesn't probably get as much recognition as he deserves is why i wanted to sort of show this little book you can pick this up all over the place it's not that expensive at the time it was one pound fifty published by the writers and readers publishing cooperative it's interesting on amazon and other websites there's a i'm a bit confused so actually when it was published i presumed that it was in the 70s but it doesn't actually give a date it just gives the date of uh, mike's photographs and gladdy elders Write, um, writings and stuff like that in 77 but there's a bit of confliction with the actual publication date I've seen 81, 82 I thought it was 78 or something like that there's a little bit of confusion out there on the sites to work out actually which edition I have because I'm not really sure 144 pages and like I stated it was Mike Abraham's photography which made me buy this and I just want to have a little look through it Again, it's, a, it's, it's in the 70s, it's about the state of Britain, the state of our culture, our people. In particular, with this, it is about old age pensioners. I think there's some facts in this, which I think Gladys Elders is talking about, how in the 70s, the 16 to 65, 60 year old population doubled, whereas the elderly over 65 years of age quadrupled and I think that's very you know it's it's been consistent ever since I think it's about the isolation the loneliness the worry the strife the struggles of the old at the time and this is all brought together by Gladys and I think in this when you when you look at her intro here she talks about I think that she talks about it was during my recovery from a bout of severe depression a couple of years ago that a doctor said to me, why not write a book about old people? And, and she just went, yeah, OK, I'm going to do it. And this is how this book came about. It's a collection of stories. It's letters from... Um, it's, a le it's letters from people who were old. It's, it's, it's from old people. It's an accumulation of texts and writers and... Anybody who wanted to contribute, and it's put together to describe how old people are feeling at the time. There's an introduction by J.B. Priestley, who I think even states in here how old he was at the time when he wrote this. And there's some fantastic photography in it. It's standard novel size, as you can see. It, it, it is that 8 by 5. It's that standard book size. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to delve too deep into it because I think it's a couple of quid this you can you can pick it up and I think it's it's worth chasing Mike's work as well and and, and also if you've got an idea for a project and you're doing stuff this is these great reference points these books to actually start doing research and also about the way things were shot and just getting a bit of historical context into documenting something like this now so we've got different chapters. We've got Kate, a poem, introduction by J.B. Priestley, preface, chapter one, metamorphosis, chapter two, how it is, chapter three, finding the present and the past, chapter four, education, chapter five, health and the aged, and chapter six, what's to be done, chapter seven, Gladie Elvers, her life, postscript, appendix, test notes, suggested reading, all people's organisations. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's an interesting insight from the time Kate what do you see nurses what do you see are you thinking when you're looking at me a crabbed old woman not very wise uncertain of habit with far away eyes who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice I do wish you try who seems not to notice the things that you do and forever is losing a stocking or shoe, who unresisting or not lets you do as you will, with bathing and feeding the long day to fill. 
In that what you're thinking, is that what you see? Then open your eyes, nurse. You're not looking at me. I'll tell you who I am as I sit here so still. As I use your bibbing, as I eat at your will. I'm a small child of ten with a father and a mother, brothers and sisters who love one another. A young girl of 16 with wings on her feet, dreaming that soon now a lover she'll meet. A bride soon at 20, my heart gives a leap, remembering the vows that I promised to keep. At 25 now, I have a young of my own who need me to build a secure, happy home. A young woman of 30, my young now grow fast, bound to each other with ties that should last. At 40, my young ones, not grown, will soon be gone. But my man stares beside me to see that I don't mourn. At 50 once more, babies play round my knee. Again, we know children, my loved one and me. Dark days are upon me, my husband is dead. I look at the future, I shudder with dread. For my young are all busy, rearing young of their own. And I think of the years and the love I have known. I'm an old woman now, and nature is cruel. Tis her jest to make an old age like a fool. The body it crumbles, grace and vigour depart. There now is stone, where once I had a heart. But inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells. And now and again, my battered heart swells. I remember the joys, I remember the pain, and I'm loving the living life over again. I think of the years, all too few gone too fast, and accept the stark fact that nothing can last. So open your eyes, nurses, open and see, not a crabbed old woman, look closer, see me. That's beautiful. Kate, the writer of the poem, was unable to speak, but was occasionally seen to write. After her death, the locker was emptied and this poem was found from Elders Reality Press, Chris Stirl. Beautiful. J.B. Priest, the introduction. Gladys Elders, here about her life and why I think, you know, she, she wanted to put together the book. We've got Metamorphosis. And I think, you know, as in the quick as well, Mrs. M is nearly 80, her ground floor flat is in condition, in a bad condition. He, he is very confused, does not know who the landlord is. It's just that, you know, alienation of, of people, isn't it? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to briefly just look at the pictures and mention the chapter and see what pictures we've got. And I presume if they're not tagged or labelled that it's a, it's a Mike Abraham shop. And here we go again. It is, one to, it is one thing to be properly concerned about their welfare, quite another to treat them as a pack of infants because they have earned their pensions. It doesn't follow that they have to be patronised or that they particularly relish the pat on the head from their juniors. This sickly and condescending approach that continues down the line, all people must be kept as a constant temperature, as well as, says a well-meaning notice outside my town hall, to have to make them sound like pet rabbits. It's true though, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Classic. He's such a good photographer, Mike. I need to get some of his other stuff and have a look at it. Oh, that's beautiful. It's such a shame these pictures are tiny. That's probably the best angle to keep it on, isn't it? So this is articles from the Telegraph, the Mail. Uh, Eight-year-old in the Bassett house. I had to worry how to pay her electricity bill. She would only switch on her heat is when neighbours came to call. Her fear of a big electricity bill made her a victim of hypothermia. She died from cold the 4th of the 2nd, 76. Amazing. We 
Mrs B lives in an old people's home. She is deaf and blind, but mentally very alert. She speaks very well, but to communicate with her, you have to spell words out on the palm of her hand. Wow. And that's, again, just dropping up there. So page 53. So this is chapter three, finding the present in the past. And this is just sort of Thomas Hardy, a bit of quotes from that, Thomas Hardy. And looking, I think, historically about different contexts of writings by the elderly, I think. Writings about the elderly from like Arthur Morwick and how to reinterpret and reinvent how we deal with old age and the people. Great pictures. You know, it's a shame if you if you were to look at these pictures in a in a proper book format, you know, like that. They're fantastic, aren't they? So that's just that's uh, that's, that's evening echo. That's not Mike Abraham's. But I just think the fact that this is Mike Abraham's work is, is worth just mentioning it and worth skimming through it. And get this book, go out and buy it. it it's fantastic. There's some great shots. I think a little bit, um, you know, it's hard to design books in this format when it's like almost like a novel base. But I'd like to have seen this book as a different format. I'd like to have seen it as more, if it was just picture led, like a standard photography book with the edu with the text, it would have. I think it would have had a much more of a strike. And this is, I think, educating the elderly. Yeah, it is. It's educating the elderly. So he's had a, his work cut out, Mike, just trying to get the, you know, the the, the pictures and the and and putting it together in that story template of the chapters. And maybe he was sent out to do different things based on what the chapters were going to be and. It'd be interesting if he has time to discuss that and if he remembers shooting this, it would be really good. Working with the young and how the young can play a vital role in, in helping educate themselves and helping maybe the... maybe the spirit of an older person something which is going to happen to us all, I guess, or hopefully most of us get to that point. So I'm on 101, again, it's like, this is, um, this is the geriatric, that's what it says in the statement. So yeah, I think, I haven't even gone into it. An article by Sir Ferguson Anderson stresses the importance of preventative and remedial action. The spirit and service given by all people should be made. It is essential that they have given good attention and first-rate hospitals. Indeed, no health service can carry out other essential obligations to the whole community unless the elderly are adequately cared for. Totally. It's a fascinating little book, this. Fascinating. Get it. Go and get it. Go and have a look at it. I'm trying to find more pictures. That's Gladys. So I think the, the final part of this is about Gladys and her life and how she came about to, leading up to buy it, getting this book and who she was. And this is some poetry in here by Gladys. Um, let's end with that. Pensioners Charter, Appendix and Organisation. So I'm going to end with this. So here we go. I come from a country that does not exist. They call it the world, this place from which I come, racism, ageism and nationalism and mammon prophet. What are these ghosts? Am I a nation of an evil past, dead of corruption? No brave new world this, no insect hive, but one earth land and peoples of infinite variety, where mind triumphant soars, now undivided. Power, lust and exploitation, the brontosaurus past, the once enslaved mankind, the legendary past of myths and history, how came resurrection? Whence rose this land, whence these peoples, phoenix-like from the ashes of sacrificial fires? They winged rosé to greet the rising sun. Gladys M. Elder. 
And that's it. It's a really interesting insight. Find out a bit more about Mike Abraham's work and get out and have a look at this. Thank you.